Well, hello. Welcome back to another exciting edition of Coffee with Stephen. So this week's blog is entitled HR 838. Uh, there's been a lot of stuff going on in, um, in the media over the last week. Uh, everything from, you know, Supreme Court cases being listed and delisted, uh, coronavirus nonsense and everything else. And this one seems to have uh, kind of fallen under the radar to a large degree. Um, HR 666, that one seems to be uh, on everybody's mind. That has to do with uh, coronavirus tracking and things like that. Um, and that's, that, of course, bothers me, as any civil libertarian would be bothered. But this one, HR 838, I am really uncomfortable with. Um, years ago, and I kind of mentioned this in the blog, after 9-11, um, we initiated the Patriot Act, and this is where I departed from a lot of my libertarian brethren. Uh, they were all up in arms against the Patriot Act. I look, don't look at the Constitution as being a suicide pact. So when it was first introduced, and it was introduced with the idea that even though civil liberties would potentially be violated, um, it was to be used exclusively for the purpose of protecting the United States against a terrorist attack. And there were certain tactical realities that had suddenly manifested after 9-11 that needed to be addressed. And simply ignoring them would not be sufficient in order to protect the everyday lives of American citizens. So I was willing to have the Fourth Amendment become abrogated to an extent for the purposes of this limited protection. A few years later... I was driving back from the gas station, going home, when I heard a news story where a U.S. attorney was boasting about the fact that because of the Patriot Act, they were able to use certain surveillance mechanisms that were will essentially allowed them to uh, bust drug dealers. And I almost drove off the side of the road. Uh, not that I have any particular love for drug dealers, that's utterly irrelevant, but the fact of the matter was that a piece of legislation that was originally introduced for the singular purpose of protecting us against terrorism had now established the infrastructure that allowed it to expand, which ultimately, essentially, is making the Fourth Amendment completely irrelevant. Okay, um, <clears throat> I don't mention this in the blog, but it's another corollary story number of years ago, when Obama was first elected president of the United States, I happened to be at the gym, and I ran into a, a, a high school teacher that I'm pretty good friends with, who happened to be there as well, and he's very, very liberal. He was extraordinarily excited about the fact that uh, we now had President Obama as opposed to candidate Obama. And he was talking about all the wonderful things that Obama was going to do. And I explained to him that as president was building all of this architecture, building all of this infrastructure, I really counseled that he should have some degree of pause because at a certain point in the future, it would be inevitable that somebody from a political party, not his, would ultimately take power and be able to use all of that infrastructure and all of that architecture for things that he may not necessarily agree with. Um, and here we are. In any event, um, this particular piece of legislation, H.R. 838, has to deal with the development of psychological profiling, ostensibly using, uh, I'm assuming, public source information, but developing specific subcategories um, where non-elected individuals would be put in charge of developing a national policy to protect against targeted violence. Um, now, I will tell you that in the very bottom of the uh, legislation, it specifically prohibits this from being used to prevent people from uh, accessing firearms, um, which I guess is good. Somebody had some say in that. But the overarching theme troubles me to a great deal. All right. I... Um, I understand the impetus behind it, but quite candidly, I think it's a dangerous precedent. And based on my recent experience with uh, overreach of the federal government vis-a-vis -vis the Patriot Act, um, I think that we should all be very cautious about uh, moving forward with this. In any event, 
Uh, read the blog. I hope you enjoy it. I hope it you know causes you to think. As always, I want you to train constantly, consistently, repetitively, and with purpose. Above all else, stay safe.